Today, we're doing a full comparison of Microsoft's brand new Surface Laptop Go 3 to Apple's M1 MacBook Air. In this video, I'm comparing just about everything from CPU and graphics performance to the keyboard, to the design, to audio, and more. And hopefully at the end of this video, you'll have an idea of which one of these might make more sense for you. So to start, why would I be comparing these two computers? This Apple M1 MacBook Air is nearly three years old, and this Surface Laptop Go 3 was just announced a couple of weeks ago. Well, honestly, they have a ton in common and a similar price point. Both of these computers come standard with 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of memory. And just because I have nowhere else to put it, here's the storage speed of both of these computers side by side. And as you can see, they're actually pretty similar in storage speed. And both of these computers start at a similar price point. The Surface Laptop Go 3 starts at $799 for that base configuration of 256 gigabytes and eight gigabytes of memory. And although Apple sells the M1 MacBook Air base configuration at $999, you should not pay $999. You can easily get these most of the time for around $750 from places like Amazon, and I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna check that out. And when splayed out like this, they both, well, look pretty similar, right? They both have black bezels around the display, they both have a keyboard and trackpad, just slightly different color, and they both have silver aluminum casing. The top of the lid of both these devices is also aluminum, but on the bottom, it's a little bit different. The bottom of the surface is an aluminum polycarbonate resin, and I honestly like the way that it feels. It's almost a slight soft touch feel. You can see that there's these rubber rails for sitting on a desk, but it's actually kind of nice having something that's just not all aluminum all the way around. It's got a very different feel to it. And like I said, I just I actually like how it feels. The Surface is a bit smaller in footprint size than the MacBook Air because it is a different screen size, which we'll get to in just a moment. But the Surface weighs about 2.5 pounds or just under 2.5 pounds, and the MacBook Air weighs about 2.8 pounds. Now, if we look on the left side of both of these computers, we're gonna see that the Surface has a USB-A port, a USB-C port, and a headphone out. And the left side of the MacBook Air is two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. Sorry, not Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4. And unfortunately, the USB-C port on the Surface is not Thunderbolt at all. Now, if we flip these guys over to the right side, we have the Surface Dock Connect over here, which I think does up to 60 watts of charging and display port out and USB-C and whatnot if you have a Microsoft Dock. And over here, we have the headphone jack out on the MacBook Air. And the last thing before I open these up is I like both of these designs. I like that they are both wedge-shaped. I think that the MacBook Air is classic, but this one just feels new and novel to me. Both of these computers can be opened up with one hand, which is nice because you don't always get that with a lot of Windows laptops these days. And opening these guys up, you can see that the MacBook Air has a 13.3 inch display. This is the same similar size display we've had on the MacBooks for a decade plus now. And over here on the surface, we do have a 12.4 inch display. Now Microsoft's display is a little bit different screen ratio than most other laptops. It is a three by two screen versus the MacBook Air, which is not three by two. I don't know what it is. Okay, I just looked it up, it's 16 by 10. And that means that the MacBook Air display is just a little bit wider than what you get with the Surface. And after comparing both of these displays for the last couple of days, I like them both. Both of these displays probably have what some people call thick borders around the edges. The Microsoft Surface is a bit more uniform all the way around and it's got the, the rounded edges on the inside of the display. And the MacBook Air is a little bit top heavy with its bigger bezel on top. Now, probably the single biggest difference between these two displays is that the Surface is a touchscreen display. And honestly, I like that. This isn't my first Surface device, but it has been a couple of years. And I really do wish that Apple would add touchscreens to their Macs. There are times, especially when sitting on a couch or something or having this thing on your lap, where you just wanna reach up and touch the screen because it's actually more comfortable than pulling your hand back to try and hit the trackpad. I do like this feature. It's not always the best, on the surface because inside edge, when I'm trying to scroll, it's frequently not smooth. And especially when I'm trying to flick to go up, the display just doesn't move smoothly like it does on something like an iPad or when you're two finger scrolling on a MacBook inside Safari or another app. But regardless, I do wish there was a touchscreen option for Mac because it does come in handy quite a bit. Now, both of these displays do get very bright. The MacBook gets up to 400 nits of peak brightness and the Surface Laptop Go 3 gets up to 350 nits of brightness. Now looking at them side to side with something bright like this, it's hard to tell which one is brighter, but if you take it into a really bright room or outside, you can see a little bit of difference that the MacBook Air is brighter than the Surface. Neither of these devices have HDR, but in most 
rooms or offices or wherever you're going to actually use a laptop, they're bright enough to get basically anything done. I wanted to check out the backlight on these two displays because frequently when I check out lower cost displays, there's a lot of variation in the backlight bleeding through the front. But in my testing, both of these displays have a pretty good uniform backlight. And luckily that translates over to color uniformity as well. As this website kind of shuffles through different colors and gradients, you can see that it's pretty consistent across the board on both of these displays. I tried out that new Samsung 5K display and it was terrible at color uniformity. I mean, it was blotchy and it was just a mess. So these two displays actually look pretty good. Apple says the MacBook Air supports P3 wide color and Microsoft says that the Surface Laptop Go supports sRGB and is individually color calibrated from the factory. Now, when it comes to sharpness, the MacBook Air has a clear advantage over the Surface. The Microsoft Surface has a pixel density of 148 pixels per inch. And I like to use The Verge because there's a lot of text, a lot of bright images, and it does a good example of showing how clear text can be. But when I move over to the MacBook Air, you can see that the pixels are quite a bit smaller, which makes the text look sharper or more rounded or whatever is needed. And side by side, you can see that the MacBook Air just has clearer text than the Surface. I will say when just using this device and not directly comparing it against the MacBook Air, the display looks good. I have no issues reading the text, but coming from a MacBook Air, I do notice the less sharpness of text. Oh, and I do want to mention that both of these devices do have auto backlight, but I did notice that using the Surface in a room setting where the light conditions were not changing, the screen brightness would frequently adjust up or down a little bit, which was noticeable, but there was no change in light in the room. So I don't know exactly why it felt the need to continually adjust, but it was. And so that was kind of annoying and I probably will turn that off. Now, depending on what you do with your laptop, whether you watch a lot of videos or you play a lot of games, the speakers may or may not matter that much to you. But of course I had to test out the speakers on both of them side by side. So here's what they sound like. This is the 720p camera built into the Microsoft Surface Laptop Go 3 and the built-in microphones. This looks like a 720p webcam and the graphics processing or image processing is, well, not great. And this is the 720p webcam inside the MacBook Air M1 and the built-in microphones. And as you can see, the image processing, well, it's a little bit better maybe color-wise, but it is pretty soft. There's a lot of lines missing in my forehead, which Actually, that's pretty nice. So when you're not watching movies or rocking out to your favorite song, you probably want to get some work done. And that's where the keyboards and trackpads can come in handy. I have to say, I love the Apple Magic Keyboard. I use it all the time, every day, whether it's on the laptops or the iPad Magic Keyboard or the desktop Magic Keyboard, I really like Apple's keyboards. I'm able to jump between all of Apple's devices with the exact same keyboard feel and I don't have to worry about any muscle memory issues. That being said, the Surface Laptop Go 3 has a pretty good keyboard itself. I actually had no issues typing on it. It does feel slightly different from the Magic Keyboard on the Apple devices. Like it just feels a little bit softer, almost like it's dampened a little bit or requires just a little bit more pressure to push down the key. Something just slightly different between the two keyboards, but it's not a bad keyboard. I had no issues typing on it, but I did feel a difference. At the top of both the M1 Air and the Surface Laptop Go 3, you do get half right function row keys for media playback and screen brightness and whatnot. On the MacBook Air, we do have Touch ID, which is the same Touch ID that we've had for years. It is really fast. And on Windows, we have Windows Hello and this fingerprint sensor, and it's almost as fast. One thing that's cool about the Surface Laptop is that when you wake it up, the fingerprint sensor lights up and it just kind of looks cool. And speaking of light, 
the MacBook Air has a fully backlit keyboard and the Surface does not. There is no light whatsoever from the Surface and that is pretty disappointing. When it comes to trackpad, the trackpad on the MacBook Air is just better in my opinion. First of all, it's larger, so you have more room for three or four finger gestures when you need them versus what you get on the Surface. I also prefer that the trackpad on the MacBook is physically pushable anywhere. Even though the trackpad actually doesn't move at all and it just uses haptic feedback, you can press down anywhere on the trackpad, which means when you're actually pushing down to click rather than just tapping to click, it's easier because you don't have to reposition your hand. Whereas with the Surface trackpad, it's a diving board style trackpad, so you can't easily click from the top as you can from the bottom. Now I do actually have usability issues with both of these trackpads. With Apple's trackpads, for some reason, sometimes when pitching or zooming, it doesn't work or it goes the opposite way you expect. I use Final Cut Pro all the time and of course I need to expand the timeline or shrink it to zoom in and out. And sometimes it either just doesn't work or it zooms the wrong way or it does something else funky. With the Surface trackpad, it's both too sensitive and not sensitive enough. Sometimes it feels like it doesn't respond at all to me. And sometimes it feels like any little movement like does something that I don't want it to do, whether it's just tapping to click or tapping and dragging. And so that's been kind of annoying. As far as just moving the trackpad and doing two finger scrolls up and down, those work just fine. And that's what I use a majority of the time. And this Surface trackpad is probably one of the better PC trackpads that I've used. And now CPU performance. How do these computers perform against each other? The M1 MacBook Air is nearly three years old. It has an M1 processor with eight cores, which is four performance cores and four efficiency cores. This just released Surface Laptop Go 3 actually has a 18 month or so old processor. It's an i5-1235U. It's a 10 core processor with two performance cores and eight efficiency cores. So the first thing I tested was Geekbench 6, which does a lot of processes in the background to simulate what users do, including a lot of stuff with files and photos and whatnot. Now I do have to caveat something here real quick though, because this Windows computer and most Windows computers have an issue. And that is that the performance can drastically change between when it is plugged into power and when it's running off just battery power. There's basically three different modes you can set this to. You can prioritize battery, you can prioritize performance, or you can go recommended, which is just kind of a balance of both. So depending on which one of the modes you're in and whether you're running off a battery or plugged into power, you're going to get different results, which makes benchmarking these things kind of annoying. The MacBook Air gets the same performance whether it's on battery or not. So to do these tests, I had to set the Surface to basically best performance mode to see what the best score possible is. So with the Surface in high performance mode and plugged in, it got a Geekbench single core score of 2,148 compared to 2,389 on the MacBook Air which makes the MacBook Air about 11% faster in single core performance. In the multi-core test, the Surface got a score of 6,664 compared to the MacBook Air at 8,688 or 30% faster than the Surface. If we move over to Cinebench testing, the single core score was actually pretty good on both of them, almost the same. However, if you look below that score of 1494 on the Surface, you're going to see that other score there and that is actually the score of running in recommended power mode versus the high performance mode. And for multi-core performance, the Surface got 4,388 versus the MacBook Air of 6,527. So that gives me a pretty good idea about the performance of these two machines, but I also did the Puget benchmark test, which does a bunch of Photoshop tests, like adding gradients and masks and rotating and adding filters and noise reduction and more to give you a performance score. In this test, the Surface got a score of 404 and the MacBook Air got a score of 648, or a 60% increase in performance over the surface. So if you're somebody who does a lot of photo editing and graphic design, then that might give you a good indication of how these two computers would perform. Next, I moved over to the Geekbench OpenCL graphics test. The graphics processor inside the Surface is an Intel XE integrated graphics processor. And inside the M1, it is a seven core M1 graphics processor. In the OpenCL test, the Surface got a score of 11,812 compared to 18,286 on the M1 MacBook Air, or a 54% increase over the Surface. So yes, those are just benchmarks, but I did check out a couple of games on both of these devices as well. So the first thing I checked out is Minecraft on these two computers. Just running around a new level and jumping and hitting and looking around the world, both of these felt pretty smooth. I didn't have any issues or feel any lag when running around in either of these computers. 
So checking out the actual frames per second that we're getting while running around these worlds, the MacBook Air is actually getting up to about 80 frames per second, and the Surface is kind of topping out at around 60 frames per second. Next, I jumped into Roblox to kind of mess around in this little paintball game, and both of these felt completely fine. Again, no issues playing either one of these on either of these devices. I have no idea actually what the frames per second is, but again, I didn't perceive any lag or frame rate issues on either one of these laptops. Next, I jumped over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is an older game, but it actually has a built-in benchmark to test the game itself, which does a pretty good job of showing what it can do. Now, the interesting thing about running Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the Mac is that it's not native to Apple Silicon processors. It's built for Intel and Apple has to translate it basically on the fly to work with Apple Silicon. And the performance difference that I saw actually kind of shocked me. With the benchmark settings as close as possible, all said and done, the Surface laptop got a score of 12 frames per second on the benchmark test, and the MacBook Air got a score of 43 frames per second overall in this benchmark test. That's a pretty wild difference, and I don't know why there's such a drastic difference in this game versus something like Minecraft. I'm not a huge gamer, so maybe you guys can tell me what that means down in the comments below. Now, since both of these computers are kind of baseline computers, I also wanted to check out xCloud Gaming, because if you're gonna game on one of these laptops, you probably wanna use something with a little bit more oomph, and xCloud might be the way to go. So I connected a controller and launched xCloud on both of these devices and ran Starfield. That's the new big game out in the world right now. I spent a couple minutes each running around the world, using my weapon, jumping, using the jetpack, and talking to people, and it was clear that the Surface Laptop Go 3 performed a lot better than the Mac using xCloud Gaming. XCloud Gaming uses the web browser, so I used Safari on the Mac and I used Edge on the Surface. And the performance was way smoother on the Surface than on the MacBook. Like there was a lot of frame drops, it just was not smooth gameplay. I wondered if maybe Safari was the issue, so I switched over to Brave, which is a Chromium-based browser, just like Microsoft Edge, and tried the same test and got the same results. The performance on the Mac using Xbox Cloud was not great. So that's all the gaming tests I did. What about just regular usage and general performance. So just using these devices, the Mac just feels smoother overall. Applications generally load faster on the Mac. Scrolling on web pages is smoother. And there just seemed to be a lot less hesitation on the Mac when doing multiple things at a time compared to the Surface. Opening up the same applications and the same browser tabs and doing the same things, watching the same videos, the Mac just performed better overall. It just never hesitated in regular use but the Surface would just kind of hesitate at different times. Like if I was closing this window, I would click the button and it would sit there like I had pressed the button, but it would take seconds before the window would actually close. Now, when it comes to battery life, Apple says the M1 MacBook Air gets up to 15 hours of wireless web browsing, and Microsoft says the Surface Laptop Go 3 gets up to 15 hours of typical use, whatever that means. So to test this, I disconnected the power from both machines. I ran benchmarks again on both of these machines. I opened up the same browser tabs. I watched the same videos for an hour to see where I was. And after a full hour, the Surface Laptop was sitting at a battery level of 69%, and the MacBook Air was sitting at a battery level of 89%. And that's a pretty big difference, 89 to 69%. Now, the Surface Laptop is still in high performance mode, and that's probably why it used so much battery. But to get even close to the performance of the MacBook, it has to be in the high performance mode. If you're okay sacrificing performance on the surface, you're going to probably see better battery life. But I just don't have time to do a battery test on every mode. And actually, since I did that test, it's been just over another two hours. And the MacBook is sitting at 82%. I don't know if you can see that. And the Surface is sitting at 49%. So this laptop is using quite a bit more power than the MacBook. But the good news is when you need to charge your Surface, you can actually get fast charging, which is up to 80% in an hour. And you can do that with the Surface Dock Connector or with USB-C. The MacBook Air does not get fast charging, but it can charge up to 45 watts compared to 60 on the Surface. And there is one last important thing that I wanna mention, and that is heat and fan. The MacBook Air does not have a fan. It is completely silent 100% of the time. The biggest annoyance for me when using PC laptops these days is that I'm so used to having no fan noise or extremely low with Apple laptops, but with the Microsoft Surface, the fan is on almost all the time with very little use. And to see how much the fan is actually helping, I checked out infrared temperatures on both of these devices during the multi-core Cinebench test. So looking at the top of the keyboard of the Surface Go, 
The highest temperature recorded during that test, about six or seven minutes in, was 43 degrees Celsius. And then if we looked on the bottom of the case, it was around 50 degrees Celsius at its hottest point. Looking at the keyboard on the Mac during that same test, the highest temperature recorded was 41 degrees Celsius, and the highest temperature at the bottom was 40 degrees Celsius. So about 10 degrees cooler on the bottom and a few degrees cooler on the top with no fan. So that covers all of the differences I can think of between the Surface Laptop Go 3, the brand new laptop from Microsoft, and Apple's three-year-old M1 MacBook Air. So how are you going to decide between these two devices? Well, first, operating system. Are you an Apple guy or Microsoft guy? Do you require applications that only run on Windows? Or are you free to go over to the Mac for personal use or even for business? If you have a reason to use one or the other, that's probably going to make the choice for you. And I can say that this is a pretty nice little laptop. I honestly don't know if it's the best or the fastest laptop you can get at this price, but I enjoy this laptop, its package, its design, and its features. So I think it's a pretty good laptop. Now, what about gaming? I don't think either of these devices are really built for gaming. So if you're looking for a gaming laptop, these ain't it. Games like Minecraft and Roblox are really targeted towards a younger audience, probably not the use case for these laptops. But the good news is that Xbox Cloud Gaming is actually pretty good, especially on this Windows machine. So if that's something you're interested in, playing PC games or console games on this machine with a controller, then this is a good laptop to get because it actually performed really well. But in my opinion for today, I prefer the MacBook Air. I prefer Mac OS. I feel like overall the computer is a little bit faster. I feel like it's got much better battery life and hey, it's actually cheaper because you can get it for 750 versus 799. But I do really like the design of this Surface Laptop Go. I think it feels good. I think it's a good weight. I think it's a good size. I like it overall. I'm definitely going to keep it. And side note, I'm a Microsoft certified systems engineer. I have been for a long time. So I'm not completely biased towards Apple. I use Windows PCs every single day. But what do you guys think about this brand new Microsoft Surface Laptop Go? I think it's a pretty good computer, but let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments below. Also, I don't know if you know this, but another device came out recently and that is the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro. And they now have USB-C and you can do a whole lot with those iPhones and USB-C and you can check that video out right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time.